copy, and as Katie says, pictures on the internet don't go away. That is actually me four years ago at the Halloween social here. So, uh, yeah, fun time. That's the most G rated show I could find. Um, so, yeah, I am in Chicago now. This is Chicago. And before we continue, just a little bit of a plug. Chicago is an amazing city. If you're in advertising, everybody thinks New York City is the place to be, but I'm just putting it out there. Consider Chicago. It's, it's hands down my favorite city in the world. Um, and I work there. That's Leo Burnett, kind of tucked away in the back there. Um, so a little bit of history. Um, and I graduated in 2011. Um, during my time here, that's the old Ad Society logo. I like the new one better, but I just thought I'd you know, put that in there for now. Um, I was the VP Finance. Um, and after I graduated in 2012, I moved to Chicago and I started working at YNR. Um, started working out on the account side, um, as my bio says. Um, figured out really quick that I was not organized enough to stay on the account side. So switched over to strategy or planning. Um, during my time there, I was on the BMO Harris Bank account. It's a regional bank in the Midwest, um, and Barilla Pasta. Um, and then in the summer of 2013, I moved uh, over to Leo Burnett. Uh, where I am currently the senior strategist for Fifth Third Bank and Firestone, which Katie helped out on over the summer. So a little bit about Leo Burnett. Um, you know, this is Leo Burnett right there. You know, that madman-looking guy with the cigarette. Um, you know, we call him Uncle Leo at the, at the place. He kind of drives the philosophy. Everything that he he did in his career has really kind of defined who we are as a company. Um, and one of his quotes is, "A real idea has the power um, of, has a power of its own." and a life of its own. Um, and so we really can, uh, consider ourselves more than just a creative agency. We're an ideas agency. We work to create awesome ideas for our clients and, and for these brands that we work for. So Leo Burnett was started in 1935 in Chicago during the Great Depression, and it's grown into this global agency network. Um, we have 85 offices in 69 countries and over 9,000 employees. And this is just a snapshot of some of the clients that we work for. So, some pretty big brands, ones that you've probably heard of, um, you know, Coke, McDonald's, Kellogg's. And the one special thing about Leo Burnett that we're really proud of is that in most other agencies, the typical lifespan, of client lifespan with an agency is about two years. At Burnett, it's around 12 to 14 years. Um, we've had, you know, Kellogg's since like the 30s. So they're not going away anytime soon. So why I'm here is really to kind of tell you guys what do I do. I get this question a lot, and I hate this question because I don't know how to fucking answer it. <laughs> so I say, I'm in account planning, and I kid you not, this is, this is the response I get. It's account planning. And it's for my mom and dad, and the other 99% of people who ask what I do. So, I mean, you all know kind of, I mean, we have a lot of new people here. I hear a lot of underclassmen, but you might be familiar, you know, the way an agency is structured. So you have your creatives on the left. You have your art directors, and they make beautiful imagery. And then you have your copywriters. They make words awesome. They make them do things that you would never imagine they could do before. You have account managers who are really at the center point of the, the relationship. They talk to the clients, and they make sure everything's on time and on schedule. And then you have your media planners who ultimately go out there after the work is produced and they figure out, okay, where do we put this out in the world and how can we do this in a really smart way to reach the people we need to reach? But how about a planner? What do we do? Well, for some of you who may have heard about this already, a lot of times this comes up. We are the voice of the consumer. True, what does that mean? I don't know sometimes. But I can tell you what I do do. And what I do do is I wear a lot of hats in my job. So these are kind of the different things, the different roles that I play throughout my day. So when people ask me, what's your day to day? I'm like, I don't know what, what day is it today? What time is it? Because I don't know what I do every day on a day to day basis. You know, I'm a data analyst. I'm a market researcher. I'm a brainstorm facilitator. I go in with the creators when I get things started and jump started. I'm a focus group moderator. I go in and I talk to consumers and get their feelings and perceptions on things. I'm a strategic steward. I make sure that the work is on strategy and that we're, going, we're doing the right things. We're not going too off the path that we set forth. Um, I'm a social anthropologist. I go out there. I know about culture. I know about what people are into. I'm a futurologist. I know trends. I, I know what's coming up, or at least I think I do. Um, and then ultimately, my job is to write the creative brief. It's the thing that I go into a meeting. I say, hey, creatives, this is what we need to make, and this is how we need to make it and then they go off. It's kind of a springboard for them. 
But what ultimately is kind of the thread between all this? What are we trying to find when I'm doing all these different things? And it's really this, insights. This is the key thing that a planner is looking for, um, is, is this insights. Um, but the thing is, what is an insight? And that's a question that I get asked all the time. Well, first, here's the dictionary definition. Insight. A thought, fact, combination of facts, data, and or analysis of data that induces meaning, furthers understanding of a situation or issue that has the potential of benefiting the business or redirecting the thinking about that situation or issue, which then, in turn, has a potential of benefiting the business. Wow, that, that's news to me. Um, that is a really long definition, and it's something that when you show that to people, they still don't understand what an insight is. And the thing is, insights are so important you need to understand what that is. So first, to kind of help out, I'm going to start out with what an insight is not. It's not a statistic. It's not a data point. It's not something that, you know, 99% of people do X, Y, or Z. That's not an insight. It's not an observation. Or it's not an anecdote. What an insight is, is a combination of all four of those things. And it's really about peeling back the layers. It's, it's going and, and, and pulling the curtain back and finding an unknown thought. And this phrase is kind of an oxymoron. You know, you have un, un, or unthought known. Sorry, I said that wrong. So unthought and known. So unthought meaning that it's something that you have to find. It's not apparent at first. But on the other hand, it's known. A good insight is something when you tell somebody, they're like, well, no shit, man. That makes sense. It's supposed to be obvious. But the thing is, insights are always in front of us, and we have to dig them up sometimes. So to, to kind of help through the process, I'm going to go through really quickly just kind of four habits of highly effective, insightful people. These are four things that a good planner kind of goes through every day in order to find these insights. But one thing first, it's not only reserved for planners. You know, you always hear the phrase within an agency, a creative idea can come from anywhere. The same thing with insights. Anybody can be insightful. You know, it may be, you know, to use a, a college analogy, Finding insights may be a planner's major, but it's something that everybody should be minoring in. It's something that everybody with an agency <coughs> should be able to do. So don't think that, oh, when you're working in an agency, it's the, it's the strategic planner's job to find the insight. Everybody needs to be able to do it because it's how you evaluate work. It's how you determine whether work is good or bad if it's based on a powerful insight. And if you don't know what that is, you won't be able to make good work. So first, hunt in unusual places. This is where things get kind of fun for planners. You know, here in class, you know, you kind of learn the, the usual places. You learn about, you know, market research, focus groups, uh, usage and attitude study, that's what UNA stands for, uh, tracking studies, competitive tracking, and communications. I mean, these are things that you learn in class. It's all the theory and the textbook stuff. But where you can really find insights in the, is in the unusual places. It's going out there to places you wouldn't think to go and really digging in. It's talking to psychologists, looking at the heritage of brand, you know, looking at unspoken taboos, things that people aren't willing to touch. You know, cigarette counts, things that people always talk about and, and hold really high esteem for, but you know, because they're so sacred, we're too afraid to touch them. Um, cultural contradictions, things out in the world that just don't make sense. When, when things don't make sense, people don't want to touch it. And, and just the rest, I mean, things like, you know, YouTube videos. I mean, this is a job where I get to sit at work in my cube and just watch YouTube videos every day, and I get to charge my clients for it. It's kind of awesome. Um, you know, watching, you know, TVs, movies, books, you know, you can find an insight from anywhere. It's, you don't have to have a report or a white paper and find an insight within that. If anything, that's how you get boring insights, it's because everybody has those. It's, it's you going out there to the unusual places and putting a new spin on things. So an example of this was we have the brand Purina. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the dog food. And you know, kind of in the research process, you know, what's the most popular thing on the internet? Cat videos and dog videos. <laughs> so obviously that's where we went. We started watching dog videos and kind of all the different ones. And we started asking ourselves, why? Why are there so many dog videos on the internet? I mean, yeah, we get dogs are awesome and people love their dogs. Why do people love their own dog? You know, sometimes when people show you their own dog, it's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool, but I don't think you love that dog way too much. <laughs> There's something very personal when it comes to your own dog. Um, you know, any dog is good, but to you, your dog is great. 
So that really led to this insight of hidden in every single dog is a great dog. And from that, we got this work. If your dog can dream it, Purina Pro Plan can help him achieve it. Seeing how they make their decision, you, 
can see all the different things, the different stages that they go through. Here's one for ragu, the pasta sauce. Um, you know, it's from watching kids. You kind of realize that, you know, kids don't have, you know, the easy too either. You know, even kids have a long day and they need some comfort food. We think comfort food is just for adults, but they need comfort food just as much as well. And this is the kind of the word that came out of it. Mom! Hey, Mom!